Number nine, if you're looking to make a statement without saying a word, here it is right here. It's listed as a lovely hat huh. on the website. Okay. Lovely indeed. It's a hat and a master disguise all in one. It zips up and down so you can show up to a BBQ all covered up, <laughs> then unzip and say, hey Whoa. guys, it's me. Oh. Just imagine all the surprised looks you'll get. The website is uh, uozee.com, U-O-O-Z-E-E.com. Right. -E -E okay. And it's only $17.99. Oh, wow. Which, if you ask me, is such a small price to pay for such a, a lovely hat yeah. and face covering. It's so much more than just a hat. It's There's kind so of much a bonnet. Yeah. Like an aggressive bonnet. Love a bonnet. Aggressive bonnet. Yeah, yeah right. I like it. That's kind. Number eight, if you're looking for a slightly more organic looking tattoo, you might want to try the old stick and poke method. Oh, yeah. It's based on a style from ancient Japan, and it's been gaining popularity thanks to Instagram. Huh. Instead of using an electric machine, stick and poke artists use needles to poke holes in the skin. All right. They're safe as long as they're done in a professional, clean environment using right. sterilized needles, of course. Yeah. But they take longer to apply than tattoos apply with a machine, so if you have a little patience, it might be an option, and the tattoos look a little more organic and less manufactured. So, yeah. Oh, yeah that's what does that the real mean? difference. Yeah, yeah it doesn't look the same. Or well, like home done. No. Home done. Oh, that's great. Something for my mom there. Beautiful. I don't see the difference. But... Mm. Your mom's still working on that arm sleeve, Paul? Yeah, she's got the uh, barbed Almost wire. Barbed wire, that's a nice touch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I bet that looks nice. There's a little bit of a sag in one of them that, you know, she's working on getting that straightened out. But generally, they look good. See you later, Ma. Uh, time for number seven. Uh, sometimes uh, the most American things aren't anywhere to be found here in the USA. For instance, what could be, a, could be better than a mashed potato machine? Mm. And this is from Singapore. And they have them at 7-Elevens in Malaysia and in other Asian countries. This thing even dispenses gravy. Oh, you got to have gravy. Just look at that. Why don't we have that here? Oh. This is America. Yeah. Now that is a gift. It's, <laughs> it looks, <laughs> it's the most they're talking about organic, right? It's like eating it right out right. of the... Yeah. Right, right. Like Straight from nature, the I feel like, right? Yeah. 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 So much Yum. better than getting those tomatoes uh, to potatoes yeah, and mashing them. Yeah, those are always a mess. Yeah, wow. That's a gift there. Number six, let's, six, let's talk about the dodo. Now, much is known about the flightless bird. It died about 300 years ago. Okay. But the interesting thing about it, the dodo may have been monogamous. It was considered loyal to its mate and dedicated to its baby chicks. Problem was they only laid one egg at a time and their nests were on the ground, oh. not in trees. So sadly, that made things easier for predators to get to the eggs. Sure. Which in the end did not help the species right. continue on. This is one of those stories. How in the world can you prove this? Right. That a bird that lived 300 years ago may have been monogamous. Right. Well, no the, relatives of the dodo that are still alive. No interviews there were people. of the dodos. Right, but they weren't trustworthy back then. No. It is an argument for fooling around, though. I mean, look, it could happen right. to us. We only have one a year, yeah, right? That's yeah. why the species right. ended. Right, we could right. be coming down there. That, that is an interesting conclusion, years. Larry. It's exactly. not one that I would have come to. This is but, why yeah. he's our leader. Yeah. Yeah. You oh, or I Larry. would have never thought to raise no, that. No, not for a uh, second. Yeah. Issue. Yeah. We'll follow you. You say where you're going. We're right yeah. behind yeah. you. Yeah, monogamy sounds great, but if we become extinct, then they're going to say, yeah. should have listened to Larry. Yeah. yeah. Larry blazing that While trail. He's in the big chair. Number That's five. Nice. Now it can be told there's nothing wrong with ordering a restaurant's cheapest wine. Wine okay. steward Mark <laughs> Oldman uh, says any decent restaurant will serve only good wines. And while you may be tempted to order the second or third cheapest wine, Restaurants are way ahead of you. 
They often list their worst or most overstocked wines in those positions, knowing that most people will buy them to avoid looking cheap by picking the lowest priced wine. It's so hard to pick out a glass of wine at a restaurant. And you just know it gets marked up so much. And... Uh, that's why I always cheap pick the cheapest. Right. I don't have the palate for it. I can't really. I can't tell either. Taste it could have been Kool Aid for all I knew. You don't know. <laughs> Plus, you could just drink the bottle of wine in the parking lot before you go right, out. Right, there you yeah, go. Yeah, that's probably the way you really bring it in your purse. It. You're right. Again, Larry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're full of great two ideas two. today. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hero. Uh, number four, if you're talking in your sleep too much, your stress levels could be to blame. According to the old sleep scientist, some people speak in full sentences, others mumble, but if you normally don't talk in your sleep and you find that you've been doing it lately, you might be dealing with some anxiety. Keep in mind there are other factors that could be causing this, like insomnia or sleep apnea. The experts say avoid caffeine late at night and try to create a more structured sleep routine. Wow. Hmm. You don't say. Yeah. That was... <laughs> try to get eight hours of yeah. sleep at night. Yeah. And number three, this day in history, August 31st, the first solar powered car goes on display in Chicago, and you're thinking 2003. Maybe 1987? No, we're going back to 1955. That's when General Motors held its Powerama, Cars mm. of the Future, here in Chicago. William Cobb designed it. It's called the Sunmobile. Mm. You can't drive it. It's a 15-inch model. GM said the whole concept worked. The solar cells on top of the car did produce energy, just not enough energy. The cells could only crank out 12 mm. horsepower. So that was a sign of things to come. Number two, if you want to seem smart but also want to be entertained, may we recommend this French book? It's called A Dog's Head. Right. It was written in 1950 by Jean Dutard. Okay. It's a story of a boy born to his middle class parents' horror with the head of a spaniel. <laughs> this sounds like a good story. Edmund yeah. must endure his schoolmates teasing, there's bullying in this book, as well as an urge to carry a newspaper in his mouth struggles there it was well received and is seen as a commentary on what we value. Mm. You have some great illustrations along with yeah. it. Yeah, so there's a lot of pictures. I might um, make it through the first mm. chapter or something. And then get rid of that book right. as soon as you're done. You pass away. it along to the yeah. next person. Uh, I need to store those up. Number one, do you like stuff that's boring and awkward? Well, we have just the thing for you. This is an excerpt from an interview with the Icelandic uh, band Sigur Rós. It's from uh, 2007. Note, they do speak English, and the host, Luke Burbank, did his darndest to be polite, but here you go. Sigur Rós is Jon Bergesen on guitars and vocals, Kjartan Svensson on keyboards, Ori Pal Djarsson on drums, and Gero Kholm on bass. How did I do with those names, guys? That's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. How do you guys create a song? We, we just sit down and create a song. Does one person start playing one instrument and then everyone else starts to kind of add into that yeah okay. kind of like that did you think you would be the kind of band that sold two million records i d yeah i don't think we you know we don't really expect anything so it's just why not <laughs> what did you guys i mean what obviously at some point you decided to get in the same room and start playing music with each other what was the motivation you just wanted to make music yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> Want to make music. Could you have ever imagined, though, that it would become this sort of big phenomenon that it's become? Is <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one guy I don't know. I mean, li like I said, um, I don't think we really expect anything. We just, we're just playing the music and anything happens. It's oh. Almost good. Wow. Are you days. enjoying? I got to tell you though, it sounds pretty typical a, of an NPR interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's Sam true. Boring. Tour the world and be. This guy's a part on his twelfth question. Fascinating and he's interview. Like and <laughs> he's got a half-hour show to fill. Huh. <laughs> They're wow. telling the weatherman, "You got to go yeah. long." <laughs> Bring him skilling. We need someone to fill twelve minutes. Wow, wow. Uh, that uh, is bad. Oh. That's nine at nine. Nine and nine.